Well, hey guys, your friend Spencer here. I've had a long day at church. It's been awesome and wonderful. We thank God for what he did today. And so a few days ago, we left a comment, a post really, on our community tab on our channel and said, if you got any questions you want, we, you want to ask, anything we haven't dealt with, or just maybe some holes we can fill for you and you're understanding some of the things we're trying to teach here, then go ahead and leave it here and we will do a video just answering just your questions. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and just pull that up here on the screen. I, I just glanced through these real quick and I have not given a whole lot of thought to them. So we're just going to try to rapid fire through these. And I, I, we had a great response. Appreciate the, the great questions we had on there. So uh, let's go ahead and pull this up. This is our uh, this is our YouTube channel right here. And I uh, want to just throw this out there. This is our uh, the, the comment that we left. He said, tonight I'll do a video answering your questions about the modern religious world. And uh, leave a question on this post. We will answer that tonight. Looking forward to hearing from you guys. Well, I couldn't do it that night, but I, I, I'm here now to get it done. And so I uh, want to just remind you real quick that uh, if you have not uh, subscribed to our channel, go ahead and do so at this time. And uh, you will certainly enjoy all the con content that we have, uh, uh, that we're going to bring through all this. Uh, man, just got so many things happening, and it's going to be really good. So go ahead and subscribe to our channel, like this video if you haven't done so already. So I'll just go ahead and go to the bottom here and just, just start from the bottom, work our way up through these questions, and appreciate that. So um, here's the one at the bottom. Melanie says, what do you think about Christian playing cards? My father plays them just for fun, but uh, I think they're a demonic practice. Uh, he is a pastor, but he thinks it's somehow okay. And also, if you've seen Jeremy Camp's new movie, I Still Believe, what do you think of it? I thought it was weird. didn't seem to glorify God at all, to be honest. There was something very new era, occultish about it all over the movie. It was quite disappointing. So, um, well, the uh, the play-in cards, there there is a, and I don't understand all of it, uh, but there is something out there that explains how that the joker is jesus and and there is some tale out there and i'm not sure exactly i understand all that uh but um i you know i i just personally i don't have any any desire to play cards i mean there are other games out there like card games that i find to be much more entertaining like you know uno and all that kind of stuff if you want to play games like that it's fine i guess um as far as the uh, Jeremy Camp's new movie, I still believe, I have not seen that, and so I need to check that out. I'm glad you brought that to my attention, but I am not familiar with that. So, uh, Cam Roberts says, what is your biblical belief on women wearing pants, and uh, do you believe that it's a sin? Well, I'm going to get in trouble right off the bat here. So, um, here's what I believe the Bible teaches. I, I believe the Bible teaches that uh, men and women are different. And I think uh, there's things in the Bible that even say that women and men's hair should be different. And I think that what women and men wear should be different. Um, and so I, I just believe that the most modest thing a woman can wear is a dress. And uh, But at the same time, I, I recognize, you know, it's not my business to tell you what you need to be doing. The only authority that I really have is, is the power of influence. And so I can just tell you, I, I, I believe that if you're a woman and you're a Christian woman, you ought to err on the side of modesty in in so many areas, and so if if you know if you can wear a pair of pants and not be convicted by it, God bless you. I, I'm not mad at you. Just uh, I'm not even trying to beat you up. Not even trying to make an issue out of it with you. So, um, but I do know a lot of good Christian women who do believe that uh, that it is a sin to to wear that, um, and it's it's that's just that's just their opinion. And so it's just, that's just one of those things that that's between you and God. And uh, you can you you know you can believe whatever you want to believe about that. I, I really, uh, I really am not interested in policing anybody on that. So, uh, but I do know a lot of good Christian women that they they certainly don't dress that way. And so, um, good question. Uh, Elizabeth Coulter says, I go to an independent Baptist church, but it seems modern lately, as they uh, try to rein people in with fun things. I also don't agree with children's church during preaching, which they do. We have a school at our church, K-12, through which is great, but there seems to be constant activities and sports for the kids, which I feel takes them away from family time. Am I being judgmental of my church? Well, um, you know, there are some things there that I think you can be cautious of. Yeah, sports can become an idol in a Christian school, and uh, they, they could be too much sports, just too much emphasis on that and very little emphasis on the, you know, the spiritual side. I think a lot of Christian schools are very little on Christian, very big on school. And, and I, I would rather have the other way, very big on the word Christian, very little on the school. And, uh, you know, uh, our church has children's church and they, you know, they do that because 
you know, quite frankly, some some children are just they can't even sit through a service, and so mom is trying. You know, mom does discipline at home and uh, doesn't know how to con control her kids, and so she, if she sat there with her children, she'd get nothing out of the service because she'd constantly be fighting her little rugrats, and so they, they do children's church to try to help with some of that. Uh, I don't think there's anything really wrong with the children's church. Um, in the book of Nehemiah, they had the reading of the law behind a pulpit of wood, and all those with understanding could sit there and, uh, and hear. And uh, so, you know, if you've got some three-year-old kid sitting there, they're not going to understand what the Bible is being preached anyway. So, uh, you know, it's okay to have something for them. Um, but, you know, I, when it comes to things and disagreements within your local church, I always give a extra measure of grace to people. Uh, and, you know, just try to get along the best you can. There is, you know, th there are times to go to war and try to reclaim your church, but over a children's church is not one of those battles that I would fight personally. So that's my take on that. So Alita White says, I know this is music related, but know anything about Keith Green, if it's okay to listen to him or not and why. So uh, Keith Green, I I've listened to a little bit of his stuff and, and I don't, I, I just didn't really understand it. I think he was in the 70s. I think him and Leonard Ravenhill were good friends. And, um, but really, I, I, you know, I'm going to do something you, you don't hear much on the internet. I'm going to tell you, I really don't have much of an opinion on, on him. So I could give you my opinion, but I, I don't know that much about him. So I'm just going to refrain to say, don't know that much about them, which is something you don't hear on the internet. And by the way, it's okay to not have an opinion on certain subjects. <laughs> I just want to make sure that somebody on the internet says that. Uh, opinion on Rich Mullins' music. Let me let me type him in because I I, uh, I think I know who that is. So, Rich Mullins, and uh, yeah, that that I if if that's a guy I'm thinking of, I am not very. Yeah, that's another guy I'm not real familiar with, so I'm just going to refrain for now. But I'm leaning on the side of not real, not real much in favor of that. If that, that's not even good grammar, but I'm going to say it that way anyway. So John Mark says this uh, question on these church teaching: Our past and future sin is paid on the cross, so nothing that we do, good or bad, can make us lose our salvation. Well, the thing is, a lot of people are stuck. And really, it's a Catholic mindset. You're stuck in this whole idea that there's the good and the bad, and there's like this big scale in heaven. If the good outweighs the bad, you go to heaven. If the bad outweighs the good, you go to hell. Um, salvation really is not about what you do. It's about what Christ did. And when you receive Christ, the righteousness of Christ is imputed to your account. And, you know, if, if I could lose my salvation, I would have lost it a million times. But, you know, the book of Jude says, "...now unto him is able to keep you from falling." Uh, that's that's eternal security. John ten twenty eight. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Um, you know, when you're saved, you're saved to the uttermost. And so, yeah, past, present, future sin is all paid for, and you don't have to pay for that anymore. Uh, you can be chastised if you choose to sin after you're saved. But the thing is, when you get saved, and you truly are born again Christian. You truly, you truly are washed in the blood of Jesus. Your sin will, you have a new heart and you won't love your sin anymore. You, you cannot come into a new relationship with Jesus Christ unless you come into a new relationship with your own personal sin. And when I got saved, I mean, I was a beer drinking, rock and roll listening teenager. But when I got saved, for some reason, the things I loved, those things, I hated them and God changed my heart. And so I didn't want to sin anymore. Uh, number two, we can judge only God can let us love instead. How can we win souls if we drive them away? Well, anybody who says that you, you should never ever judge anything ever is a, is a total liar. They're intellectually dishonest. They judge all the time, uh, and if they don't judge, they're 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 crazy. You know, if a boy comes to their house and they got a teenage girl and he wants to take her out, you know, they they they, they judge when that happens. Uh, they judge every time they go to the polls to vote. They judge every time they choose a place to go out to eat. Uh, they they judge every time they choose a person to work on their house or you know a, a auto garage to fix their car. They judge. Um, they judge when they choose a store that they like or don't like. So these people they judge they judge all the time. But then they get this pious attitude. Of, well, you know I don't judge when it comes to religious matters. They're lying. They're lying. Uh, they judge all the time. They're just they just trying to, it's called um what's that called in the social justice world um virtue signaling that's what it is that you know this whole we don't judge we just love people that's nothing more than religious virtue signaling that's all they're doing they're trying to project that they're more spiritual than you and truth is they're just a bunch of liars 
So, um, number three, God is a God of every culture. He will accept each form of worship as long as it is done wholeheartedly. Well, the thing is, you know, that's the argument. People say, well, it doesn't matter how you worship as long as you worship sincerely. Well, you can be sincere and be sincerely wrong. Now, nobody knows better than I. I've, I've traveled extensively. Nobody knows better than me that, that each little corner of the world, the song service is a little bit different. And so, yeah, there is some room for differences. I mean, I can promise you the people in Macon, Georgia are not, that their song service doesn't sound anything like the people in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I can promise you that there are differences. Uh, the people in Africa worship just a little bit different. But even, even amongst the differences of worship, and, and they're, not, they're not as big as you'd think, uh, even amongst the differences of worship, there still is a common theme and there still is a common spirit amongst that. And so, no, God does not accept every form of worship. I can't just run around the yard, you know, dancing like an Indian and a bunch of feathers and hi -ya, hi -ya, hi -ya, for three hours and call that worship. That's just not how that works. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Speaking to yourself in Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, Ephesians 5. That's what you need to know. And uh, just stick with those guidelines and I think you'll be okay. Uh, number four, growing in faith is a long process. So this... Church caters to all sinners, new in faith, weak in, weak in faith, strong, knowing an inward transformation is the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I believe in giving grace to people. I mean, you know, if, if you don't have people at your church to show up and, and they're kind of rough, then that church isn't doing their job. I mean, you know, people ought to come into church and hear the preaching of the Word of God, but, you know, come as you are, but leave changed. And if Christ is working on the inside, that will show on the outside. It will. It just will. I mean, like... If 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 I had organ failure, like if my liver stopped working, and that's all internal, then that's going to start showing on the outside eventually. Like if my kidneys fail, there would be outward signs of that. And when Christ is working in a person's heart and making them a new person and changing their heart, that will result in differences on the outside. So, uh, you know, to say that God looks on the heart and the outside doesn't matter, that's, that's, I don't even know how much more intellectually dishonest you want to get. Because that's, that's I mean, <laughs> that's, not how, that's not how your organs work. That's not how biology works. And that's definitely not how spiritu spirituality works either. So, uh, very good question. Let's go on to the next one. Uh, Keegan Mwa... I see, that's a tough one. Mwaura. I'm sorry. Which one is biblical, pre-tribulation or post-tribulation? Well, it's not really about pre-tribulation or post-tribulation. The really idea is how you divide the Bible. And uh, do you, do you, it's really not even about those things. It's about dispensational or non-dispensational. Uh, do, you, do you divide the Bible in certain categories? I mean, do you, do you see divisions in the Bible? And really, it's not really about... Uh, it's not even about post-trib or pre-trib. It's really more about what do you think? Who, who is Israel today? And really, those are the questions that will determine whether you're pre-trib pre or post-trib. Uh, if you if you read the word saints in the book of Revelation and you think that's you, you think that's the church, uh, then you're probably going to be post-trib. But if you if you understand there's a difference between Jew, Gentile, and church, then you're going to be pre-tribulational. And so that's really what the issue is. Not really about post-trib, pre-trib. It's about dispensational view of the Bible. And so um, uh, Felicia says this, uh, I received the Lord as my Savior in March 1964. The church is so different in comparison to when I started my journey with the Lord. Yeah, I, that, that's really my heart. Uh, the church has changed too much with the culture. And uh, we have got to make sure that the church doesn't, doesn't change. So uh, Joe Gala, Galagos says, Should we stick with the KJV only or the NKJV and NIV? Are, are they okay? Um, Joe, I always tell folks, if, you're, if you are English speaking, use the King James Bible. Uh, because the King James Bible actually comes from a completely different manuscript than the new KJV or the NIV. And, and matter of fact, guys, it's, it's really not even the KJV versus anything else. It's, it's, it's manuscripts. Um, these, these NIV, new KJV, ESV, American Standard Version, all that stuff, all that stuff's come from a completely different source. Okay, so it's like, you know, if, if I got two cups of water and I say, which one, you know, let's just say I got two cups, two cups of water, which one's good? Well, they're both water. Well, what they don't tell you is that this cup of water came from the sink and this cup of water came from the toilet. And so you look at them and say, well, they're both water. Well, where do they come from? Well, you probably don't want to drink the one that came from the toilet. You probably don't want to put that in your mouth. 
And when you study the source of the new KJV, the NIV, all of them came from the Alexandrian manuscript, which was, which was translated by Westcott and Hort. And so basically, I mean, it, it wouldn't be wrong for me to say that, that these manuscripts are, the, the source of these manuscripts is like saying, one, the King James Bible came from the sink, and most of these other modern versions came from the toilet. And so you say, well, they're both water. Well, you can drink what you want to, but I'm drinking the one from the sink. So, <laughs> um, AJSNEOG says, how do you approach people who are either hardcore atheists or a different religion? It seems impossible to get through to them sometimes. How do you share it in a heartfelt way? Well, how do you get through to these people? You just preach the gospel to them and preach the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You don't have to do the work. The gospel does the work. And uh, the gospel doesn't need really, I mean, just, just preach the gospel. It's kind of like saying, how do, you, how do you stab somebody with a sword who doesn't believe in swords? Well, you just stab them with a sword anyway. And uh, even if they don't believe it, it'll start cutting on them. And I've seen the gospel do crazy, I mean, just work on people, uh, harden people. I've seen it do that. So Robert Scott says this, Hello, Brother Spencer. If I have no Bible-believing, KJV-only, evangelistic, sound doctrine, loving churches in my area here in Essex, England, should I attend and be part of a church where I can where I can not sit under the pastor? The Lord has led me to get into evangelism, team preaching, the gospel, and giving out tracts, but the church itself is weak. Um, you know, I would never go to a doctrinally compromised church. You can go to a weak church that's doctrinally sound, but I, ne I would never go to a doctrinally compromised church. And... Um, and I, if I was in a situation where where I lived there was no church, I would move, really. And I, I mean that, and I, I, I can say that because I have done that. And so, I, you know, I want to make sure that everybody knows that. I mean, that's part of the reason I live in Kentucky is because, you know, I want to make sure that my family, I was willing to move. I was willing to move to make sure my family and me was in a good, solid church because I need the fellowship, I need the accountability, I need the preaching. So, uh, the Internet is Satan. That, that man, I... Some of these names, I tell you what, uh, do you think Islam will be the one world religion? No, I don't. I don't think the, I think uh, the one world religion is going to be a form of Roman Catholicism. And I think Islam and uh, the Pope are going to come to a meeting. As a matter of fact, there's a big meeting in May coming up with all the world leaders. And every Pope that comes along is really trying to work, work out to uh, create a universalist mindset, saying that we all worship the same God. We just see him from different directions, which is really what I explained in my Third Adam video, the documentary there. And so you need to go watch that. Go watch Third Adam, and that will explain all of that, I, I think, very clearly. So uh, Joshua Vasquez says, How do familiar spirits govern false religions? Um, well, I think that uh, if you understand uh, who Satan is, you understand he has the, you know, he's the one who rules all this world. And when the temptation of Christ, Satan said, you know, worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the earth. Um, and then I think also in Ephesians chapter 2, it talks about the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The God of this world is what he's called. And uh, so, yeah, Satan basically is the one who's pulling the strings in a lot of this stuff. And you can see it uh, in the globalist political scenarios that are going on today. Any, anytime you see globalism, that's the mark of Satan. And uh, Bill Gates is a globalist. Uh, you know, these, the guy, who, Apple's, the CEO of Apple's a globalist. Um, Hillary Clinton's a globalist. And, uh, and most politicians today are globalists. Barack Obama is a globalist. And that, that's, that's really satanic in origin. So, uh, Caitlin says, what are Messianic Jews? What are their beliefs and how they differ from Christianity? Well, the Messianic Jews basically are people who, uh, they're Jewish people who want to hold to all the traditions, all the feasts, all the, uh, you know, the Jewish practices. Uh, but they believe that Jesus was the Messiah, which, and they try to merge the two. And it really is, it gets really weird really quick. Uh, but New Testament Christianity and Messianic Judaism, the only real common ground they have is they believe Jesus was the Messiah. They, they believe Isaiah 53 is about Jesus. And, uh, and so that's really the only common ground they really have. And so uh, Messianic Jews are very interesting people, though. So uh, Nikki Brown has said, how is your post-cake complexion? Uh, man, my face is so shiny and clear. I feel 10 years younger. So thank you for that. Emmanuel says, curious, I can't listen to Bethel Hillsong or Most Likely Jesus Culture. What do I listen to as a Christian? Well, uh, I want you, Emmanuel, I want you to download WIOP radio app. That's Walking in the Old Path, W-I-O-P. And if you have a smartphone, you can download the app. In the, uh, if you have an iPhone, you go to the App Store. If you have an Android device, go to the Google Play Store and 
download WIOP Radio, and that is our church's radio station. I endorse that radio station. That is mine. Uh, that is my church's, and so you'll enjoy that. Mary Clark says, My sister is living the homosexual lifestyle and has for decades. I've been trying to reach her on the subject, and I think she's feeling convicted, and she knows what the Bible says, and she's told me she's suffered demonic attacks. Any advice would be appreciated on how to further reach her and and prayer as well. This includes you, Brother Spencer, and all my other brothers and sisters. Well, Mary, yeah, um, as I read that, Mary, the, the verse came to mind that Jesus said, This kind goeth not forth out by but by prayer and fasting. And so, you know, I challenge you to fast for her. Uh, fast three days and try to maybe do that, you know, once a quarter or something like that. Um, but if, if, if she seems like she's being convicted, maybe the Lord's working on her, I don't know. Um, and you know, there's, you know, these people, a lot of them, they've, they've got issues and you have to really, really work hard to reach them. And they're very complicated people. So, um, but we love them. We, we, we believe that uh, Jesus died for all. And so, and that includes them. And so I want you to pray for her, Mary. I'll, I'll, I'll help you pray about her and maybe, who knows, maybe she can come back. I, I have known people who, Oh, uh, the Lord reclaimed and rescued out of that lifestyle. And so we thank God for that. So Steve says, does Old Testament law still apply even though we are now under grace? Well, um, you know, it's kind of a, it's not really a simple question, but generally Old Testament law, no, does not apply. I mean, you're not sacrificing bullocks every morning. Uh, you know, people are not, women are not going to the temple eight days after they have a baby to offer for the purification, uh, that type of stuff. But the, at the same time, there are there still are, you know, concepts and, ideas that transcend all the Bible. Uh, for example, thou shalt not kill is still in effect in the New Testament church. Okay, <laughs> So, um, yeah, but you know, the, the keeping the Sabbath, that kind of stuff, uh, the ceremonies of the high priest in the Old Testament the tabernacle. Yeah, Jesus was the fulfillment of all of that. So, no, we're not under law. We're under grace. But uh, at the same time, we still need to live right and live as Christians. So, uh, Lilama Sosama, that's a cool name. How, do, how to identify that I'm attending a wrong church, how to identify between a God's church and Satan's church, and that I'm listening to a false preacher or pastor. Well, uh, if you have the Holy Spirit, sometimes you'll hear things and you'll say, you know, that doesn't sound right. I just don't think that's right. And, and you'll cringe. I've heard, you know, I heard a Baptist preacher years ago preach and, and just something wasn't right about what he's saying. And turns out he was having affairs and all kinds of stuff. Something was wrong with him, that man. And so even though you may not be able to put your finger on it, you just kind of know something's wrong. And, uh, and if a church is using modernistic methods, they're using rock and roll, they're entertaining people, they're, and, and the people in the church are showing no holiness in their life. They're, they're having, you know, praise band practice on Saturday night, and then going, after they get done with their praise band practice, they're going and drinking and all that stuff. Um, you know, that's the kind of church I would never be a part of. So, but if you can find a church where the people are living right, they're trying to live the Christian life, they're preaching the Bible, they're not using modernistic methods, fleshly methods, rock and roll concerts, um, that's the kind of church I would go to. Uh, Spencer's opinion on Chip Ingram. Let me let me look up, make sure uh, who that guy is. Yeah, he is a, um, uh, let's see, yeah, I don't know who that is. I had to look him up later, and so, but I, I do appreciate the question. Angela Sogomonian, and uh, I appreciate them. I think there's like three girls there that live in that house that are regulars on our channel. So we appreciate you guys. Uh, do you think people who go to churches like Hillsong and who listen to apostate preachers are genuinely lost, or are they just confused? Well, I think it's a mixed bag, Angela. I think that there, yeah, there are some who are saved people who... They have no idea anything outside of that, and so they're just in it just because that's all they know. And maybe channels like mine can help, you know, open their eyes to the truth and get them out of it. Um, I know a lot of say people who like Hillsong, uh, but guys, it's it's. I wouldn't say that everybody who listens to Hillsong, and I, I wouldn't say people who are involved with Benny Hinn or whatever are are not saved. Uh, not all of them. I, I would say a, a chunk of them. Probably, you know, I would say, you know, people involved with like Beth Moore and, uh, oh, what's her name, uh, Paula White. Yeah, there, there's there's probably a good chance they're lost. But uh, when it comes to the music, like the Hillsong music, I, I wouldn't say people that listen to Hillsong are lost. But, you know, you never know. I think it's wheat and the tares. And, uh, but 
if a person is walking with the Holy Spirit and they're right with God and they want truth, I think the Lord will show them uh, that there is a lot of problems there. It's time to get out. And I think channels like mine are trying to expose that stuff. So, um, Lilama Sosama again said, which biblical translation is best, most, treacher- most trusted, which translation is really bad, and why? Well, uh, I talked about this for just a moment, but it's, it's really not even a King James versus you know, the NIV issue. It's, it's about the Masoretic text versus the Alexandrian man, manuscript. And we'll probably deal with more of that in Third Adam Part 2. Uh, but, you know, it, it's really not even an issue of the translation. It's more of the sources of the translation that is the issue. And all these new Bibles, um, they all come from a bad source. And so, uh, pretty wild stuff. We'll deal with more of that in the, in the future. Deanna Jackson, please tell me more. Please tell me about inner healing sessions and sozo teachings. Is this biblical? Um, the Sozo ministry is of Bethel, and that is a basically is a Christian form. It's a Christianized version of meditation and New Age inner healings, and it is apostate. It is satanic. And it is something you need to run for your ever loving life and get away from that stuff. And we will deal with that in Third Adam Part Two. Uh, Candace Stevens, how do you think uh, things are going to change after the pandemic? And do you think things will ever go back to normal? Well, I, I think there's a lot of political powers right now that are uh, working real hard to plunge the world into socialism. I think there are some people right now that are, especially here locally, uh, they are trying to do everything they can to make this cause this to bankrupt cities, nations, that kind of stuff. And on the uh, once, the, once the whole economy implodes, they can just buy up the economy of pennies on the dollar, and that's their whole plan, and then implement socialism on top of that. So that's something I'm watching very closely. Um, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I just don't think anybody does. But uh, this is something that really is historic. I think this is probably going to change the world kind of like 9-11 did. It'll change it forever. And so, say the loss, what part of Kentucky are you from, Spencer? Well, we are right south of Louisville, Kentucky. And so, Alita White says, The churches who believe in wearing, wearing women wearing skirts longer the better versus pants. Um, you know, I, I always tell Christian women, and, you know, in, in our family, we've always erred on the side of modesty. And uh, I've always felt like, uh, I've always felt like a, a dress was uh, a lot more modest than, you know, a lot of these pants that I see. And so that, that's just our opinion on that, but we wouldn't fight with anybody or even fall out with anybody. Just giving you my take on that. So uh, how do we get this form of modern church? A- Ash Ruel, I believe is our Australian friend. How do we get this form of modern church? And if we go back to at, back to period after the book of Acts, uh, what did the church look like? What is the right church denomination today and why? Well, I'm a Baptist. And the reason I'm a Baptist, I'm a Baptist by conviction, which means I see the the, you know, I teach, I see this Bible and I read this Bible and I see things like believer baptism. Um, I don't, I see no infant baptism. I see uh, that there's pastors and deacons and I see those pastors and deacons that, that lead the church are, um, they're males. And then I also see that there is, uh, uh, there's two ordinances. There's baptism, the Lord's Supper. Uh, and I see all those things. And, and basically what, those are what we call Baptist distinctives. I see those in this Bible and so therefore I'm a Baptist. And so I, I believe the right church and domination of today is being a Baptist. That's what I believe, and I can explain more of that in a later video. Uh, Faina Solomon says, What is the real beliefs of the Pentecostal Charismatics as compared to true Christianity? Uh, well, the Pentecostalism is, uh, is really a, 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 a newer in the realm of Christian history. Pentecostalism is a very, very new denomination. It was born out of the Zusa Street Revival. Uh, really, it is an offshoot of Catholicism. People don't realize that, but Pentecostalism is a Protestant denomination born out of Catholicism. And the Charismatics are the hypercharged, crazy version of that. Uh, I fear... Now, I, I know many good Pentecostal people who love the Lord and are saved, born again, who love Christ. And so... Um, I don't attack Pentecostals on, on that way. I, I, I'm not saying, I don't believe Pentecostals are going to hell. Uh, I know too many good, you know, love the Lord Christians who are Pentecostal, you know. And so, uh, but I think in these groups, there are people who are spiritists, who are using the vocabulary of Christianity, and they're very dangerous. I think this, I think the Pentecostal charismatic world is eat up with apostasy. And, and really, I, I feel bad for you Pentecostal people because your denomination, Assembly of God, Church of God, all that stuff, um, 
guys, that that whole thing's a train wreck, and it's it's worse than the Southern Baptist Convention. And I I I feel for you, but I think it's time to get out of those denominations. So Ashruel says that the woman in the Book of Revelation twelve, the Virgin Mary, or someone else. I believe the the woman in the Book of Revelation twelve is the nation of Israel, and uh, that's that's always been my take. And the man child that she brought forth is Christ, and so that's what the dragon is trying to attack. So uh, Alex Alexander Christie says, can you explain the her- the heresy of the Eastern Orthodox Church? Well, the the Eastern Orthodox Church is 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 a Protestant denomination. Um, they, they actually, um, well, they're not, they're not exactly Protestant, but they, they're an offshoot of Catholicism. They're, you see, the thing is, there's, there's only two religions in the world. There's truth and error. And the Eastern Orthodox Church believes that, if, if I remember correctly, I think they believe in baptismal regeneration and they believe in a work salvation. So that's something I would never, I never get involved with. Um, my husband and I were both saved in Baptist churches and met at Christian college and want to be missionaries. This is Michelle Morgan. Uh, we both had doubts about the pre-trib paradigm. When we changed our mind after studying it out for ourselves, no mission board would take us on, even though we agreed on every other point of doctrine. Why do you think most Baptist circles are not tolerant of anyone who might suppose that we could be the ones uh, we could be the ones against whom the Antichrist makes war? Personally, I believe that we we will be here for the six seals and rapture before the seventh seal when God's wrath is poured out. Well. Uh, Michelle, I appreciate the question. Uh, the problem is, and that's a uh, that's a post trib position. What you're explaining, um, the the problem is, and the and the, probably the reason most of these mission boards wouldn't wouldn't want you is uh, because there's a lot of anti semitism in the post trib world, um, and really guys like Stephen Anderson have so. Um, you know, I, I know poster people who are good Christian people, but uh, but it has a public relations problem because the name of Stephen, Stephen Anderson and his crowd um, have just so tainted the view of that doctrine. Most people, all, when they hear post trib, all they all they think is Stephen Anderson, and then they're like, nope, don't even want to touch you because uh, it's just so toxic. Uh, and matter of fact, a lot, a lot of people in that crowd believe, and they they preach this. They say if you, if you're not post trib, you're going to hell. And, and that's when you get into cult territory. Okay, th- those guys are nuts. Uh, a lot of them are just, they're, they're just way out of bounds in their, in their behaviors. Um, so, yeah, that, uh, I mean, really, that's, that's something that uh, a lot of people, a lot of, especially a lot of Baptists, and uh, they're not going to touch that. They're not going to mess with that. Um, and really, from a dispensational point, you know, they, they, they're not going to believe that... Uh, the nation of Israel's God's done with them, and so that that is a doctrinal issue with most Baptist mission boards, and because of that, they're just not gonna, you know, they're they're not gonna be okay with that. And so it just, you know, maybe it's just time for you to go do something else, and that's that's probably what happened there. I don't know everything, but you know, I, I do believe we're gonna be out of here. I'm, I'm a pre-tribulation guy, pre-tribulation rapture guy, and I do appreciate your question. And the only reason the only reason I'll answer that is because you just, you just seem to be nice, but. Uh, man, there's a lot of crazy in that world. So, <laughs> uh, so thank you, Michelle, for the good question. Uh, Cam Roberts, do you believe that in accordance to all the end-time deceptions and popular movies and such that war in heaven has already taken place and Satan knows that his time is short, so he is programming the population to reject Christ when he returns? Uh, yeah, I, th- I think that there's a lot of that going on. I think people are being programmed to talk about the modern entertainment deception in my Third Adam documentary. And uh, talked about that, and so yeah, I think I think the whole entertainment industry is designed to to program you even subliminally to reject Christ and be anti God. And there's just so many so many messages in that world; it's really scary. So, um, Justiana Musyoka, what's the name of our Creator? Or hardly hear Christians utilize. Um, don't even really know what you're asking there. So, uh, A J S N E N E O G. Wow. Please explain Matthew 24. I've heard people say the fig tree is Israel, and the verse is saying that the generation that sees Israel become a nation will pass away till the end comes. They relate it to the generation defined in Psalm 90.10, and they predict the end of the age, 70, 80 years after Israel becomes a nation, or around 2028. 20, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I've heard a lot of people uh, interpret those verses that way, the fig tree being Israel. And and I can't really say that I disagree with that interpretation. So I, I, I mean, like I really legit think we're right at the end. I, I really do. I think you know this is not going to take much longer. And uh, but at the same time, I'm not a date setter. I would never set a date. I would never say 2028 is it because I mean I'm, I remember even as a kid, 
you know, people talk about, you know, the year 2000 is coming, the year 2000, this can be it, 2000. And I mean, just, I, I don't do that game, but I do think that that is a uh, fair interpretation of that text. And I, I would not never attack anybody who felt it that way. So Cole Roberts is okay to play good theological songs that come from borderline heretical churches. Well, um, there's not many of those. So out of the tens of millions of songs that have been written in the past 10 years, if you can find two that are that way, that aren't cheap, that aren't, you know, ooh ra Jesus, ooh ra ooh ooh, and then um, even then I wouldn't even sing them. So um, borderline heretical churches, I guess you have to be more specific with me to help me understand that question. But yeah, if it's a hill song, a lot of people are trying to take hill song music and just put it to a piano and, and dumb down all the crazy on it and say that it's okay. I think that's a dangerous precedent to set. I think you're playing with fire. I think, like I put in that third Adam trailer, you don't even know what you're messing with. So is Alexis Young says, is Judaism a false religion? Yes, it is a false religion. It is a, it is a, is basically they're just cutting the Bible and saying the New Testament is null and void, not even good, and we're just going to stick with the Old Testament. That's Judaism. That is a false religion. Uh, Catherine says, have a co-worker who strongly loves Jesus but is totally caught up and enamored by Jake's dollar and people like them. If work is slow, she'll have earbuds in streaming their messages as she works. Well, you know, a lot of people that are into that, they don't understand that's really just prosperity doctrine. Those people are, are manipulating them and uh, using God as a means and end to either align their pocket or fulfill their life. And really, Christ is not going to be the means to an end. Christ is the end of itself. And that's that right there, what I just gave you, is more than most people could handle. So I just try to feed them some good information. We have our Amazon channel, and you can actually go there, and uh, there's plenty of books in there that you can see. i got a list of good books. And you can try to feed them some good books, and uh, that will be helpful to them. So Rick Kurt says, Help us identify her in Revelation 18.4. Who is her today? Uh, Revelation 18 is talking about the city of Babylon. And I'm not totally sure who uh, what Babylon is. Uh, Charles Hiltabittle is a guy that I look to for prophecy. He says Babylon is the literal city of Babylon in Iraq, but I'm not totally sure. I know a lot of people say that it's America, and that could be so, but uh, really, I don't really know. So, um, James Britt, how to rightly divide Revelation is so critical. If it's not done correctly, you can get all turned around. Well, there's a lot of people say that uh, Revelation is the same story told three times. Um, I don't know if I believe that. I, I believe Revelation can be read chronologically and be interpreted chronologically and straight through one time. And so um, that's how I interpret the book of Revelation. And of course, but at the same time, I would never fight anybody who believed differently in that manner. If you want to believe the same story three times, man, that's fine. God bless you. We're, we're still friends. So, uh, Ambert Hebert, please talk on inner healing. Well, yeah, the Sozo crowd, they're trying to get into all that stuff, and that's that's dangerous, demonic, new age stuff. But uh, inner healing, if, if you want to be healed, you just need to get saved. Christ can heal you. Uh, spirit, soul, and body. You're, when you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes inside and, and works on the inside. He can heal a lot of hang-ups you have. He can heal the hurts you have. And, uh, and that's really what a person needs. A walk with Christ can do a lot of good healing on you. So, something for you to know. Uh, Olin Bachelor says, Am I right that about 95% 95 of so-called churches are false? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, yeah, you're right. That's, I would say that. Sure. Uh, Felician Sabawanka says, Is it necessary to keep a Sabbath? No, you're a New Testament Christian. If you receive Christ by, by uh, faith as your Savior, uh, then the Sabbath's not necessary. I mean, I, I, I'm busy on Saturday. I, although I do think you ought to take a day off uh, probably once a week or so. <laughs> uh, but no, you're not bound by the Old Testament uh, keeping of the Sabbath. No, you're, you're, you're not bound by that if you're a New Testament Christian. Uh, Brian and Vanessa, having recently come out of Pentecostalism charismatic group for my whole life, how would you suggest I discuss heretical issues with my family members, visions, hearing directly from God? Thanks. Uh, yeah, Brian and Vanessa, I would say, uh, you know, you, you were in it your whole life and God showed you the light and you came out. You got to be patient with those that are in it. You have to be very patient with them. Although you, you need to discuss it, it's a, it's a conversation worth having. Uh, but at the same time, you need to be patient with people. You can't just blow people up 
and you know you, you got to be you got to have some tact got to have some patience and and a lot of prayer a lot of prayer for your family and try to feed them some good books try to feed them good videos i mean our channel we try to deal with some of this stuff and and if they want truth god will hopefully reveal the truth to them and that's that ought to be your prayer so uh jonathan swan poel says pre-rapture or is the antichrist of Daniel and Revelation out now. Well, the Antichrist could be alive now. I, I don't know, but uh, I believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. I believe there is a possibility we could see the uh, the Antichrist coming. So, Second uh, Thessalonians chapter two, the great falling away, and that man of sin be revealed. So. Um, you know, I've always interpreted that as being during the tribulation period, but I believe the rapture of the church is going to happen before the tribulation period starts. So, uh, Hiker Bill says, Hi Spencer, our son is turning four years old next month and he loves to read. Do you have any recommendations for our children's Christian books? He's a good reader, but he's not quite ready for a King James Bible. I understand that. Also wondering how you feel about your Bird Yeoman's Christian music uh, videos. Or our son loves watching them on YouTube. Okay, well, uh, Hiker Bill, for your son, um, I would recommend either you look up uh, the Sword of the Lord and try their website. Let me just pull that up here. And uh, um, swordbooks.com, I believe, is the website. Yeah, that's them. And uh, go to their website and check out their stuff. I mean, they've probably got some good kids stuff on there. And uh, yeah, there it is, Lighthouse Kids Club. They've got some stuff on there, you know, teacher material, that kind of stuff. And I'm sure they got some kids stuff on there. Also, if you'll go check out the uh, Revival Fires, they've got some... Uh, Brother Coral actually wrote some good uh, children's books. You go check those out. Also wondering how you feel about Bird Yeoman's Christian music videos. Our son loves watching them on YouTube. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Bird Bird Yeoman's. I, I've always kind of joked and said he's a Christian Willie Nelson, and uh, <laughs> um, but I, I you know uh, you know Bird Yeoman's is like not he's not at the top of my list, but I do feel a lot better about Bird Yeoman than I do Hillsong. So. I uh, appreciate that good question. Anchor Deep says, your thoughts on John MacArthur and Gene Kim? Yeah, John MacArthur is, uh, he's, you know, the Wretched Radio crowd, Justin Peters, uh, all those guys, Paul Washer. John MacArthur seems to be the head guru of that bunch, and they're hyper-Calvinist, and uh, uh, that's what they are. And uh, Gene Kim is, uh, Gene Kim is a Baptist preacher in Southern California. He's a Ruckmanite. And a smart guy, pretty interesting, got an interesting channel. And uh, so, yeah, that's who those guys are. And I, you know, I think they're both nice guys. I have, uh, I've watched both of their videos and gleaned some things from both of them. And so, but, uh, you know, don't really have much of an opinion on them besides that. So I don't say that they're like my enemies or whatever, but uh, that's just where we are. Mindy B, what do you think about Whole Tones? The guy who started says he's a Christian, but it seems a little new age to me. Yeah, Whole Tones, that's that, uh, listen, any, just as a rule of thumb, anytime somebody's dealing with frequencies and all that stuff, that's new age. And that is bad business. That is demonic. Get out of that stuff. Leave that alone. Run for your ever-loving life. Get away from that. And... There's a lot of people who say they're Christian. Bill Clinton says he's a Christian. Hillary Clinton says she's a Christian. Barack Obama says he's a Christian. Jimmy Carter says he's a Christian. But that doesn't mean these people are Christians, okay? Um, so just just remember that. Alita White says, if one, real, uh, if one realizes they've fallen into believing some modern views, what well, would be a good way to get away from it? Well, they, you know, there's a lot of people get duped and they get disillusioned and that kind of stuff. Um, a, a way to get away from modern views and false end times modern stuff is to get in a good Bible believing church, a Bible preaching church, and you know, get yourself in there, get yourself under preaching, get get in the Word of God, allow somebody to teach you, and that will really help correct a lot of that stuff. Uh, Lilama Sosama says, Is Calvinism biblical? Why, why not? Um, I am not a Calvinist and and here's I, I actually reject the whole Calvinism Arminian Arminianism paradigm. I I I I think there's a third option. And uh, <laughs> um Although I do, I do think that you know, a lot of Calvinist guys have some solid points, and you know Spurgeon was a Calvinist, um, but you know a lot of a lot of hyper Calvinist guys, they're they're anti evangelism. There's a, there's a lot of problems with that. There's a lot of problems with Arminianism too, uh, but I don't think the entire Calvinism Arminianism paradigm is correct. I think it's I think the whole thing is wrong, really. And uh, there is a third option. It's called Bible believing Christianity. And so, is God sovereign? Yes. Uh, did Jesus die for all men? Yes. So there you go. That's that's really the answer to that. 
Uh, Glennis Jones says, What about churches that teach about red moons, also those which have real focus on Judaism, feasts, blowing the shofar, also those which claim they can pray blessings? Greeting from Wales in the UK. Yeah, um, there's a lot of churches out there that they're they're basically trying to incorporate Judaism and you know all that kind of stuff into Christianity, and you can't do that. Uh, you know all that stuff was done away. The New Testament church is not bound by that stuff, and so um, I, I I just I'm just not really interested in being in a church like that, and I don't recommend you go to one either. Ginny Boo says is asking God to open heaven and be overflowed with the Holy Spirit and bringing fire down a sign for new age in church. Yes, yes, that 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 is Kundalini stuff. That's that's wild charismatic uh, stuff. Um, I, I don't see the Apostle Paul doing things like that, and so therefore I'm just not interested in that. I don't, I don't see. I really don't see any command to do that in the New Testament. Uh, as far as that, the Pauline Epistles. So, Heresy Hunter, my family attends an Assembly of God church. I have two questions. What is your opinion on Assemblies of God? My second question is, because the Assembly of God's affirm women pastors, which I believe is in violation of the Scriptures, many in this movement take a cultural stance on the issue. I take it that since the Bible says no, that the office of pastor is strictly reserved for male leadership, is it a sin to affirm women pastors? Of course, yeah. If any man desire the office of bishop, he desires a good work. So there's no such thing as a woman bishop in the New Testament. There's no such thing. Okay, and uh, and so anybody who disagrees with that, you're just wrong. I mean, I, I was dealing with this in Africa in one of our conferences over there, and I had a Pentecostal man walk in, and he says, you know, I disagree with you about women pastors, and I showed him the passage of scripture. You know, if any man desire the office of bishop, he, he you know, he desires good work. You know, let him be the husband of one wife. And how's a, how's a guy going to be the husband? How is a woman going to be the husband of one wife? It's just, it's just not going to work. And he he told me he said, well, he said, you know, I just think that was Paul's opinion, not necessarily the word of God. Well, no, it is the word of God. It's the commandment of the Lord. And if you notice, all false religions are led by women, and all false religions worship women to some extent. One of them being the Roman Catholic Church, Isis and and Ishtar and all that stuff. All, all these false religions are worshiping women, and led by women. It's something to think about. So the Assembly of God, they endorse women preachers. I would never, I wouldn't put a dollar into the Assembly of God denomination, just for that very reason. So although I do think there's say people in that denomination who love the Lord and are good people. So Sarah Weber says, what are your, uh, what are some charismatics in the modern? Uh, characteristics in the modern church that is upheld that are true to the early church and what is most endangering the modern church that we should be the most concerned about that we should be earnestly contending for the faith and know that Christ is the one who builds his church and that, that the gates of hell will not prevail and I praise him for it. Basically your point of view as someone who has traveled to many churches in the world, uh, where are we succeeding and where w- might we be failing and what can we do about it? And thanks for being so willing to answer our questions. I look faithful men in the church like you. Well thank you Sarah. Um, I, I think really I think the struggle that the church is having is, it really has always been the same thing. It's trying to accommodate Christianity to the culture, trying to bow to the culture, and, and, and resisting the temptation to give in to the pressures of the culture. You know, the world's always pecking at us. You know, kind of like Nehemiah up on the wall, the sand ballot Tobiah. Come on down from there. Come on down. You, you don't need to be like that. You don't need to be doing all that. You don't need to be doing that holy stuff. Come on down and be like us. And the world's always pressuring the church to do that. And, you know, you know, we live in a modern era, but the, but the struggle's still the same. It's the idea that we, we have to cave to the culture. And that's what these guys like Furtick and all these other Hillsong or whatever, that's what they've done. They, they've tried to reach the culture by becoming the culture. And really the truth is when you, become the cult, when you reach the culture by becoming the culture, then the culture is not going to be reached. The culture actually reached you. Reached you. you were con- they converted you. You didn't convert them. And uh, so, but where are we succeeding? I, I mean, I, we live in a day and age now where the truth of the gospel, I, you know, there are some good men doing good things for God. Uh, but if you're going to do, if you're going to do something for God, you're going to have to, you're going to have to endure unbelievable pressure from supposed Christians. I mean, if you get right with God, you'll be hated more in the church house than you will be in the local bar. And so, but I do think God is God's cause it is advancing. I think the work of God's going forward. And I do appreciate uh, you, Sarah, leaving this great question. So Patrick says this. I'm not even going to try that last name. Herb, well, I'm not even going to try it. Uh, so <laughs> um, 
Patrick said, I've heard the Lord's Prayer outdated since it says, Thy kingdom come, and now the kingdom has come. Uh, is it true, or should we continue to pray it? Well, uh, there's a difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is a physical kingdom. Uh, that's The kingdom of heaven is going to come at the second coming of Jesus Christ. But the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom, and that kingdom is now. Uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, all these things should be added unto you, Matthew 6, 33. Uh, so, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, also in Matthew 6. That, that is the model prayer. It's not the Lord's prayer. The Lord's prayer is John 17, but the model prayer is in Matthew chapter 6. And uh, so, that is actually a Jewish prayer. And so, you know, there, I, I don't see anything wrong with you praying that the Lord would come back. But when you say, Thy kingdom come, that's talking about the kingdom of heaven. And that's, that's a prayer for the second coming of the Lord Jesus. And so as long as you know that, I guess I don't care if you pray that. I, I hope Jesus comes back in my life that time. That'd be awesome. So uh, Patrick also asked, How would you approach friends which are so misled that they believe that the Holy Ghost himself told them that if people like Benny Hinn and T.B. Joshua are true men of God, and even if they read the Bible, they do rather believe in their own experience and encounters more than God's Word. And how do you celebrate feasts like Easter and Christmas since most of its traditions is of pagan origin? Well, um, uh, with people who follow T.B., Joshua, and Benny Hinn, a lot of them are willfully deceived. And so if a person is deceived, you can help them. But if they're willfully deceived, you really can't help those people. Uh, it says, Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. And uh, go watch our video on T.B. Joshua on that. We explain that and a lot of these people. So some of those people you can't help, but some of you can. Some people go that way out of just sheer ignorance. Okay, so how do you celebrate feasts like Easter and Christmas since most of its traditions is a pagan origin? Well, you know, I don't celebrate Easter. I celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I don't celebrate Christmas. I just take a good vacation around the end of the year every year and go see my family in Georgia. So, uh, you know, I, I, I don't celebrate those things. So, um you know, I, I don't know. I guess a lot of people fight, fuss and fight over Christmas and all that kind of stuff. And, and I get all that. But, I, I, you know, that's not a battle that I think is even worth my time. So, But I do understand what you're saying. And I don't celebrate those things. I don't celebrate Easter. I celebrate the resurrection of Christ. And so that's what I do. Alex says, how can I briefly explain to someone what's wrong with the Hillsong movement? Send in my video, The Hillsong Generation. Uh, that one's, I think, 1.2 million views now. So, you know, you can show my videos. My videos, I think, do a good job of that. And uh, just tell them, say, look, th this is not about music. This is about doctrine. And show them the doctrine of Carl Lentz, and my videos can help you with that. So, um, Jeff Howard says, we'd love to hear your thoughts on the church in Brentwood, Tennessee, called The Remnant. And uh, I'll look them up. I don't know anything about them. So Mariana Barreto says, I see a lot of Christians following the QAnon movement. What are your views? Well, yeah, QAnon is a, is a conspiracy theory. I think it's, uh, I don't think it's real. Um, but the thing is with these conspiracy theories, you get so involved in the political side of things, you forget the spiritual side. And that, that really is a, uh, is a downfall for a lot of people. A lot of people read their conspiracy into their Bible reading. And so you got to realize the politics is a fleeting thing. You ought to be political. You ought to be involved to some degree. But at the same time, you ought to realize there's a limitation on politics. And so if this QAnon thing is real, which I'm kind of leaning that it isn't, if it is real, then the only thing in the world you can do to make it or break it. And so just let it pan out and then in the meantime, serve Jesus and do God's will for your life. So, uh, Gustavo says, what is the most important thing we need to have in our, our mind about modern religious world? And when will we have Third Adam 2? Third Adam 2 will be out in May. That's what we're shooting for. And then uh, the modern religious world. Uh, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. First John 2, 15. For things in this world, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, the pride of life, are not of the Father, but of this world. And the world passeth away in the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. That's what I think about that. So Dana says, what do you think about the prophecies of these past hundred years or so from the saints and different between the original prophecies? Um, no, I think the I think the canon of Scripture was closed. There's no more prophecies after the book of Revelation. And so these people that are prophesying after all that, I don't think that's even true. Uh, I don't think there's any need for that. Uh, Jesse says, what are your thoughts on the Passion Conferences? I think the Passion Conferences are going to be in the third Adam Part 2. There's going to be a big section on that. 
I think the Passion Conference is our new age apostasy. I think it is uh, the tip of the spear of trying to convert and damn a generation straight to hell. Uh, that that thing is, you, a lot of people see, you know, uh, a beautiful production, a beautiful worship experience. What I see is a full-on nuclear bomb being dropped on old-time religion. That's what I see when I see the Passion Conferences. I'll explain more about that. Sarah B. says, what can we do to stem the tide of lack of personal evangelism in modern religious era? Thank you, Spencer. Well, uh, evangelism is always a result of revival. If you want to have evangelism, have revival. And as, as uh, you know, evangelism, soul winning, that kind of stuff is always a result, a, a byproduct of revival. So what we need to do is pray for revival and we can have the evangelism. Anna says this, what, do you, what are your thoughts on Kenneth Copeland? My parents are heavy believers and I just can't get through to them. My father used to be a great preacher and for some uh, reason he has been completely swayed by him and Keith Moore and all of them. Please help me. Well, Anna, what you need to do is try to give them some truth, give them some books, pray for them. Uh, but at the same time, realize that uh, you are their child, you are their baby, and they're not going to listen to you. So you need to pray that somebody can come along and speak into their life some truth, and maybe the Holy Ghost can open up their eyes. And you really need to make that a matter of prayer. prayer pray every day consistently, and God will answer that prayer. Karen says this, Do you think it's strange that when my sister and I try to warn other Christian friends about it, Prosperity Gospel, Joyce Meyer, uh, Stephen Furtick, and Hillsong, they think we have lost it and just ignore us? Well, yeah, of course they did. They did the same thing to Noah. Said he was nuts. And then it started raining. So don't, don't be sad when people... Uh, you know, act like you're nuts and act like you're crazy because you believe the, you believe the Bible. Just remember that you're right and they're wrong. Well, let me rephrase that. The Bible's right and they're wrong. So, Devin says this, we live in a we live in Arkansas, fast-growing church, extremely modern, and uh, so I guess my question would be, uh, how can I tell these people that the church they're in is only hurting them and that a devotional life is not the same as studying the Bible itself? I've tried uh, before, but it seems to only lead an argument. They said, don't preach to me, don't worry about my faith. We go to church and read our devotionals, we're good, and so on. But they're missing out on the most basic fundamentals of the Christian faith and concerning my wife and I because we care for these people and refuse to look at themselves and question their own daily walk with Christ. Any insight how to approach people like this would be greatly appreciated. Thanks. Keep up the good work, Mr. Smith. Uh, thank you guys so much, Devin. Um, well, the thing is, this these type of churches are going to be more and more common in the future. And uh, I, I fear that this is just the beginning of this apostate end times Laodicea. And really, it's not even Laodicea. It's just apostate, really what it is. And um, some of these people, they don't want truth because this, these churches offer... Christianity without truth, Christianity without commitment. This, these churches, whether they realize it or not, these churches are the whore of Babylon. I mean, that's that's where these churches are. And so, Second um, Thessalonians chapter two says, God Himself should send them a strong delusion that they may believe a lie, because they receive not the love of the truth, they might be saved. And so, you know, sometimes, sometimes these people, you can't help them. You can't help them. All you can do is get your family in a good church, make sure your family is in a solid Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. And I know you love these people. I know you care for them. Uh, but sometimes, you know, when a guy jumps off the cliff, sometimes it gets to a point where you just can't help him. And, um, and so I know, I know people like this myself. I mean, I've got, I've got extended family that are in stuff like this, and it's not good. But uh, make it a matter of prayer. Pray that God would open these people's eyes. Pray. And that's really your only hope. And then also, you, you, I mean, my videos are a good resource, but there's there's other good videos you can show too. Just pray God would open their eyes to that. And so, uh, Alexis says this: How can I tell you if you're going to a modern religious church with the signs, red flags? Um, look up look up our series on new evangelicalism, modernism, fundamentalism. That'll explain all that for you, Alexis, and that will be a great help and explain it very thoroughly. Naomi says: Would you consider a child or children who are raised in a word of faith heretical household technically raised in a Christian household? That's how I was raised, and now that Jesus opened my eyes and set me free, I've been wondering about that because I didn't know the God of the Bible till a few months ago. Well, yeah, no, I would, I would not consider the word of faith Christianity. I would consider that spiritism, and uh, I would consider that kundalini. And so, no, that's not Christianity, not at all. Even though they talk about Christianity, even though they use the vocabulary of Christianity, it's, it, at its very core, spiritism is not New Testament Christianity. So Nick Jewell says, could you talk about the issues of having Paula White in the White House as a faith advisor to Trump? Well, uh, yeah, her and Trump are have about the same level of morality. So <laughs> I guess it's a good fit for them. They probably have a great working relationship. Uh, but yeah, Paula White's a nut. And uh, Paula White's a psycho. 
and uh, I don't think she's saved, not for one second is she saved. And so, um, but, you know, I think she's going to bring in that dominion theology into the White House. And I am not excited about Paula White being there. So Frankie says this, what's the difference between the biblical Jesus and the postmodern Jesus? Well, the biblical Jesus wouldn't be at a Hillsong concert. The biblical Jesus wouldn't fit with the culture. And any Christ that the world is not trying to crucify is suspicious to me. So, hey, very good question. We got through all of them and got it done, man. Praise God. I'm wore out now. So, <laughs> but I thank you for watching this video, guys. It's, it's an honor that you would allow me to influence your life in such a capacity. And so I'm very thankful for you guys watching. And so pray for us and pray about being a, a, a member of this channel. Pray about donating to our ministry. And uh, pray about getting our book, Calling Evil Good, The Live Christian Rock and Roll. It'll be a blessing to you. We know you'll enjoy it. And uh, thank you guys for watching this channel. So subscribe if you haven't done so already. And uh, we look forward to doing another one of these here in the near future. So with that being said, have a good night. Download the WIP Radio app. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. God bless you.